Okay, so you guys seem to love it. You love the content I've been doing. We're gonna give you more. We're gonna give you more of the edited content from tournaments where I did well. And this one you're about to watch was a six max bounty tournament. And the good news is it was played on GG Poker, awesome software, which allowed us to play in big blinds. So it'll give you an opportunity to sort of get used to thinking like that. So instead of thinking, oh, well, I have 324,000 in chips. I have 32.4 big blinds or whatever the case may be. So enjoy it. Glad to see all the positive feedback about these videos. We'll keep doing them, keep cranking them out. Cheers. Today. And what are we playing today? Okay, let's take a look here. I'm gonna open up this uh, other lobby. All right, so this is the lobby here today. So what do we got today? We have a progressive bounty. Those are kind of fun. At least 200 bucks awarded for each player. And then it gets progressive where, let's see, how does that say? So I'm gonna read it exactly how it says it. Each time a player is eliminated, 50% of their current bounty is awarded to the player who eliminated them, and the remaining 50% is added to that player's bounty. So let's look at the structure, shall we? Structure. All right, we got 25,000 in chips, 250 big blinds. 15-minute levels, plenty. Okay, so as you can see, over the heads of each player, you will see a money amount, right? You'll see $200, so that's the bounty on their head. If I were to knock out Edward Teach, right? If I knocked him out, then I would have 100 bucks more on my head. So I'd have 300 on mine. He'd be out. And I would pocket 100 bucks, I think, myself. 100 or 200. I can't remember. Yeah. All right, we're going to raise this one up. Six max. Let's go. I would play this at an eight or nine handed table as well. Jack 10 suited. This deep. It's a hand that plays very well post flop. Yeah, that sold out fast. Yeah, really sort of get, get a read on your opponents a lot easier. When there, Imagine there's like 30 people at your table, 30, 30 opponents. So it's tough to have an idea of how all 30 play. But when there's only six or five or four, you know, you play a lot more pots with them. You start to, you know, get more in tune. I'm going to C-bet this flop. We're gonna see bit big because that's a flop that benefits the pre-flop raiser, which is me. And why is that? Because he did not three bet me, right? So in theory, he's not supposed to have uh, a bunch of really good overpair type hands. Okay, ace on the turn. And once again, we are going big. This deep, we're just gonna bet full pot. And here, essentially, what we are doing is obviously we're charging any draw maximum. We're also charging a hand that peeled like an ace. We could be in trouble, of course, if he has ace five, ace three, ace eight, but he does not, Bella Luhar. So in that spot, when we bet that turn with pot, right? Now the question is like, what are you doing, Daniel? Why are you betting so much? Um, well, because we're gonna do that with our value hands, we're also gonna have plenty of bluffs there. We're gonna have king queen can do that. A decent amount of the time we're gonna have some flush draws we're gonna have six seven suited six seven type hands so it's max pressure right because that ace again is really good for my range not as good for my opponent all right we got ace jack now and i'm going to just flat this one success daniel i'm rosy so i'm sorry too much all right so it's a raise and a re-raise no, that's an interesting spot. All right, I'm so this is one I could four bet, I could fold, I could call, I could call too, and I'm gonna do the fold thing. Now, we don't have a ton of info yet. What we do know is this is a real name player, Bella Luhar. So typically, when you see somebody who has a name that's separated like him, he's the only one at the table. Other than me, you know, generally speaking, you know, you're you're looking at a professional. You're looking at a guy who has been, you know. I wouldn't say flagged, but, you know, noted as a, okay, this guy's a pro, so he's going to have to use his real name. That's not the only reason, but it's it's one of them. Okay, I'm going to limp. So when you see me looking over to the left, okay, you see me like, oh, what is he scrolling at? I'm just clicking a, a button, the generate button on a, a random number generator, okay? And what that does for us is, uh, is we're going to check this flop. It just allows me to stay within a balance, just like as a, you know, relatively good frequencies. Yes, Milayan, blessing from Yad to Ratid. 
easy boy. Rock steady and I did chat from YouTube. Always bringing the cheer in the morning. What well, happened, brother? All right, I'm going to go ahead and bet this one on the turn. Four small. Okay. I think I like a... Uh, I like a... Uh, what do I like? Let's see. I like a check here. I know it sounds crazy, but... I think he will bet his missed draws for me. Right? And he's going to value bet like a nine. He's gonna, maybe a seven. No, he just had king deuce, so he's probably folding the king deuce anyway. So what we were doing there, again, probably not the best combo to do it because we have an eight. So a lot of the straight draws he might have had would include an eight. <clears throat> But he could value bet a nine. He could value bet worse hands. All right, let's see this eight five of diamonds. It's just going to be a call. Just a call. See the flop. Short handed. Let's go. All right, that's a big flop. Let's see, sometimes I'm going to leave this flop. It's pretty big, and it's just because of the board texture. Sometimes on this board texture, the, the big blind can actually lead. But I'm going to check this one. I'm happy to get it in with this hand, by the way. Because look, even if he has kings, I'm a favorite. Do you know that? Because I got a pair of flush draw, backdoor straights, all that kind of shit. Now the question is, do I bet or check raise? I think I would check raise this one. I think I'm going to check raise this hand. Yep. If he bets this queen, I'm going to put maximum pressure on him. Right? Because for him to bet this queen, like what's, what's, what's he saying? He's got one pair type hand. The big blind, I'm the big blind. I can have a whole bunch of shit. Four, seven, deuce four. Bet. I want him to bet. I really do. I want him to bet so I can put a raise in. And I don't get the chance to put the raise in, so we missed everything. But we have fives. So we probably have showdown value. Damn, this sucked. I really wanted to go crazy with this hand. But didn't materialize. Blind guy didn't bite. Z Beto 1963 didn't bite. If he bets this river, I'll be shocked. If blind guy bets this river, I'll be absolutely shocked. For him to check back flop, check back turn as the preflop raiser. And bet the river for half pot? Well, this is interesting. He's essentially saying that he has a four. Right? He's trying to value bet thin with a fucking queen? What is this, blind guy? What What is this? What is this hand? I mean, I, I think I might have to see this one. So we're getting three to one. Okay? Three to one odds. Um... You know, he might be good enough to be betting thin here. Because both players checked to him. He might not be that worried about a straight. I think getting 3-1 to one, we probably can call this. But I don't like it at all. We block 8-9. I just want to see. This is cheap enough to just see what the fuck's going on. What are you doing here? He has the 8-9. Holy shit. Okay. That hand made sense. But I blocked it, right? You know what I mean by block it, right? I had an 8 that would have gotten big trouble there if I did something goofy. So I ha because I had an eight, there's only, when theoretically, if you think he's opening with eight, nine suited and not eight, nine, when I have the eight of diamonds, right? That leaves precisely three combinations of eight, nine that he could have, that's it. That's not a lot. So he could have eight, nine of spades, eight, nine of hearts, eight, nine of clubs, that's it. He can't have eight, nine of diamonds. And we don't expect him to be someone who would raise with eight, nine offsuit. So in that spot, as played, I mean, wow, we just have to call getting three to one. Because when you, when you try to make the calculation, what you're doing is you're counting the value that makes sense for him to have, right? So the value for him that makes sense is eight, nine. As I said, there's only three of those. Just three, okay? And how many bluffs are there? Well, there's a whole bunch of different random bluffs that he's going to use. And they're like 10 jack, 9, 10 suit, and just fucking say YOLO, right? So we got a whole bunch of those combos, right? Now we're also getting three to one, Right? So we're getting three to one. We only need to be right one out of four times. And, you know, the real value that he has based on what it looks like is three combos. I mean, he could have a four and check back twice, sure. So there's more than three. Um, but all, all, you know, all told, if you have, like, if there's a roughly an even number of value combos and bluff combos that the guy can probably have in this spot and you're getting three to one, you know, you just kind of have to call, right? He can't just fold there. That was pretty unlucky. If uh, if you are in the U.S., you can, unless you're in nine states specifically, I, I had them up, but I, whatever. You can look it up. Uh, you can sign up for clubgg.net, right? You can play for free with your friends. You can use the software. Have, have a blast. Do what you got to do. Then you can also take part in the sweepstakes model, which is $49.99 a month. And uh, 
you have a chance to win your seat into the World Series of Poker main event, okay? And we're gonna give away on Sunday five seats and five seats for the next four. So that's 200,000 bucks in seats worth of value. And the way it works is there's three steps. You got a step one uh, phase, which you can play as many as you want. Step two, you get there. And then if you make it to step three, that's gonna happen on Sunday. And that will be the top five players move on. And you'll see me at the World Series of Poker later this year and we'll have drinks. We'll do a little get together kind of deal, shindig. All right, we got three bet. We're deep enough, I think, in position to go ahead and make this call. Um, yeah, I think we're plenty deep enough to make this call for 12, so let's do that. All right, not exactly our flop. We still beat ace-king, ace-queen. We have backdoor hearts. Uh, against a small bet, we can peel. Anything big, probably have to just fold, but if he bets like quarter pot, this is a hand we probably continue with. Yeah, so for that size, he's betting big. I just have to, I just have to lay it down. And the turn and river were ace and a deuce. So yeah, we couldn't beat anything. Say nice hand to the guy. Okay. Also notice, guys, that the blind. Look at the. Oh, how come everyone has less chips now? Because the blinds go up, and we're playing in big blinds. But if you look at the actual stack, we started with 25k. We've got 23 something. Okay, 7-4 suited. I'm going to have some 3-bets here, too. Let's look. No, nah, we're just going to flat. All right. Okay, now we've got the middle pin, pair of 7s, and this is just going to be a check. And we'll call a bet against Jizzies here. I think I'll call even against the bigger size. Yeah. So even against the 2 thirds pot bet, I'm going to call with the 7. All right, now that's not a great card for us. When Zibeto calls, he's going to have hands in this range like Queen-10, King-10, 9-10, Jack-10, all this stuff. That's that's problematic. And then Jizz could also, but we have showdown value, right? If it's checked here on the turn, there's a chance we have the best hand. And now we certainly like our chance to have the best hand. And now the question is of size. I think the size choice is going to be in this spot, two-third pot. That's what we're going to go with. All right, here we're just hoping to get called by a 10 or a jack. Uh, we forget raised. We're just, I don't think we can fold here. We're having a 7. five suited in the small this will raise probably like 10 percent ish of the time with king five suited from the small otherwise we're going to limp okay how do i figure that out well let's see fold this one this is tight that's tight starting to develop some stats on our opponents i know guys like who have studied with solvers they won't fold this king five suited in the small they uh they play it i don't love it Personally, and I think sometimes when you construct your ranges, you you should think about constructing them to, to your strengths, right? To hands that post flop you feel comfortable playing, um, based on your tendencies, whatever those may be. And some hands, for example, for me, for all those years, like six four suited has been a hand that I'm very comfortable playing post flop, more so than a hand like king five. 6-4 suited is going to allow you to have a lot more opportunities to get aggressive on certain boards. Or king-5, you're never ever going to be in a spot where you're like, ooh, I can get crazy with this one. Kiron, why don't you just wait to enter prior to late registration closing? I think I talked about this on the stream yesterday, but for me, Right? Well, especially in a bounty tournament, that'd be a really stupid idea because you miss out on all the t opportunities to bust people and, and get bounties. Um, I'm going to call here six-handed. But uh, here's the thing, right? So on average, before late reg close, ask yourself this. If you're a winning player, you know, in a field, 
will you have on average more or less chips than if you bought in at the very last minute? You buy in at the very last minute, you're going to start with like, you know, whatever, 15 big blinds, something like that. Whereas the goal is to build up a stack bigger than that. And more often than not, if you are a winning player, you will do that. And I really like playing deep stack poker and I'm, I'm here to grind. I'm here to work, right? Your, your ROI as a winning player is going to be larger if you show up right on time. Because right on time is when you get a lot of players who are typically weaker. And some of the times, by the time you enter late reg, right? By the time you do that, they're already gone. So you don't get that opportunity to get those chips. Yeah, sometimes you'll get knocked out before that. But like I said, on average, you're going to have a lot more chips if you're a winning player by playing right on time. Okay, so what have we got? Harkos is new from Malta. 179,000 in earnings. He's finished not in the money in his last five events, and three of them not even in the top 50%. Wow, so tough spell. All right, we're going to defend here against the min race for sure. Look, we're getting six over six to one, right? Four, five... Six to one, and now we have aces up, so that's a good situation. Certainly don't lead this flop. Okay, queen on the turn. Let's see here. What do I want to do? I'm going to go for a big lead. Big. 67% pot. That's considered big. Small is under 50. Big is 67-ish, or is between 50 and 100. And then over bet is obviously a bet bigger than the pot. So those are the sizes in terms of how you would define them when you discuss poker strategy. Small, big, overbet. Bella Luna. What could Bella Luna have to call here? An ace. That's going to be a good card for us. So if he has an ace, he's dead because he's have aces and deuces with a... Question is, how much can I bet here? I'm right, going to go with two-thirds again. Two-thirds one more time. So what we're trying to do here is get called by an ace. Maybe he makes some sort of hero call with a queen as well, putting me on a missed flush draw. Like, you know, he might put me on five, six hearts, five, seven hearts, something like that. All right, he folded. I don't think he folded an ace. It's possible. But I think an ace would have called. That's where you would add the fun stuff, maybe like chopped peanuts and strawberries and stuff like that. Uh, laws, I'm, again, I'm struggling. Yeah, showdown means getting to the river is what that means. All right, what do we have here? We have absolutely nothing, but we have something. So we're going to, we're going to bet big size on this flop. And I actually randomized my sizes as well. Normally this would be a 27, depending on what I roll, if you will. So we're going to go with a big size here. It's a good hand. We're going to bluff this through all the way. So if he calls, we're going to bet big, 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 maybe big, big overbet jam, whether we hit or not. So notice that I'm already thinking about what could happen when we don't catch. If we catch, it's like, oh, that's easy. You know, just bet, bet the best hand. Um, what we're thinking of is what do we do if we miss? So like in this spot, we have, you know, the bo absolute bottom of our range. And I'm going to go ahead and bet the full pot. Full pot with this hand. And then we're going to just jam the river too. All right? Go for it. Again, we could catch a deuce or a seven. We're putting a lot of pressure on him with a flush draw. We're putting on pressure on him with just an ace. Like, if he has ace seven, does he love that? Can he hang on and feel the heat? Oh, d Nex never bluffs. Blah, 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 blah. Get a fucking clue, man. Get a fucking clue, yo. Eight four suited. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what the hell to do with these? Oh, let me see. They're like, actually, they're pretty. Oh, yeah, they're, I get it. Now, from the side, you can sort of see that they're <laughs> cute little ass mushrooms. That's not the mushrooms I meant, though. Fuck. Oh, man, whatever. It's fine. Whatever. We're going to yell at them, get mad, like, oh, you fucked up. You got me the wrong mushrooms. Ah, blah, blah. Nah. It's okay. They do their best, you know? All right, let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to check this flop one time. Boom, 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 boom. boom. And then we're going to bet half pot on this turn if he checks. Do, 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 do. All right, he's betting full pot. So that's nice. So part of why you check back top pair sometimes is because opponents will attack that, right? 
because they can. If you don't check back balanced enough, they can just bomb turn and you have to fold. But we don't have to fold because we got top pair, right? A little tricky trickies. But he's going to think when we check back this flop, I mean, if we're playing, or uh, most players that are not balanced in the spot, then when they check the flop, it means they don't have a 10 or better. They would bet, right? But because we checked, so he could bet here with like jack eight, jack seven. All right, he's betting pretty big again. Cannot fold, block an eight. He's either going to show us a monster right here, like two pair, or he's missed his draw. So let's see. Let's see. Show us the bluff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly, 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 okay? Exactly, right? This was an important concept to get. We checked back that flop and we made max value because we got the pot bet on the turn and a bet on the river. If we would have bet flop, we're not getting any river value because he's not going to bluff it unless he check raises flop, bets turn, which puts us in a tough spot anyway. This also gets us, it's pot control too. It allows us to get to the river sometimes. You don't always check back top pair, but once in a while, you know, you, if, you don't, if you don't do that ever, man, are you easy to play against. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm going to do a combo of three bet and flat here. And this one we're going to flat probably about half the time actually with the nines here. Gonna check and call with the three card straight flush. Still got nines. The button open can have a lot of like king high, king four, king five, whatever. Yeah. Okay, very small bet. That's that's workable. Check once again. Pitti says, one thing I don't get is this old school and new school thing. Okay, well, let me explain. I've done videos on YouTube where I explain how to break down a hand with the old school way of thinking and then the newer improved way of thinking, you know, with the evolution of, you know, study tools and things like that. All right, so we check back the turn. That's good. Doesn't mean we win, but it's good. Doesn't mean I'm going to bet. I'm going to check. I have showdown value. We beat king, queen, king, jack, king, king five, all these kind of hands. We don't beat a 10. I don't expect him to bet a 10 on this river. I expect him to bet an eight. I expect him to bet an ace. Question is, does he have an ace that bet the flop and check back the turn, right? Could, you know, good players will, but we probably would. Nope, he has the 10, wow. Huh, interesting. So yeah, old school is kind of like, I guess the way you would describe it is, let's see. Go ahead and limp this one. Um, limp. We're going to limp limp with the ace-queen, and then we're going to check on over to Harkos. That's a pretty damn good flop. Second that flush draw. We got the ace. going to go with one chip bet. So oh, I'm, I'm going to explain it in a minute. And then we're going to go with two-thirds. Hope he doesn't have two pair. Some sort of nine four, king nine, whatever. You don't want to hear raise in this spot, right? You're like, oh look, I have a strong hand, but you don't want to hear raise, because then you only beat a bluff. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, what a flop. He had a, a big hand himself. Aces with a flush draw. Okay. So, old school. I guess, okay, one way to describe. There's many ways to describe the difference between old school and new school. Old school is like. What is my hand? What is the specific hand that I have? Okay? And what is the best decision to make with this specific hand? Always, right? Do that with this hand, okay? As we've evolved, we've learned to, you know, think more in terms of what does my range do? The entirety of all the possible combinations of hands I could have in this spot like to do versus all the possible hands my opponent could have in this spot right? That's one way to describe it. That's just a small part of it. But really, it's like, I guess the other thing you would consider is just understanding, you know, game theory and how to count combinations and blah, blah, blah. That's a bunch of stuff that people didn't have the access to do before that they do now. And it allows them to make really, really good decisions um, by breaking down, not the math of like, oh, I'm all, he's 53%, he's 47% all in preflop. That's not the math. It's not the, I know the math cold. That's not the math. The math is like, all right, in this spot, my opponent has 70, 65 combos of value. 
He's got, you know, 16 reasonable bluffs. My minimum defense frequency here needs to be based on the bet size and the pot size, 40% of my range. Do I rank in the top 40% of my range? Like shit like that. That's math that, you know, is done at the highest levels. Not, oh, this hands ace kings, pocket nines is a favorite over ace king. Wow, look at you. Okay, <laughs> what the hell, you know? It's not the math. It's a lot more intricate, a lot more advanced than that. So anyway, you can still play poker and have fun either way. But at the highest levels, if you want to compete at the highest levels with all the best players, you have to have some sense of understanding of game theory. Some, you know? Even if it's not, like, super in-depth. Like, it just helps you get better.